something we need to think about when it comes to self-regulation is the stimulus organism response model. This is in contrast to the stimulus response model, which says that basically you can give any kind of stimulus to an organism or a creature or being, and they will always have the same kind of response. What we now know from psychology and neuroscience is that the stimulus organism response model is a bit more um, evolved and more accurate. And what that means is that there can be a stimulus, but based on the physiological state of a person or their beliefs and mindset and their resources, what their capacities are, the response is gonna be very different. So those are three things that we can learn to adapt and progress and work on, which is our physiological state, learning how to master that in new ways, our mindset and our beliefs about our ability to respond to stress, for example, and our resources and capacities. And those are things that we can learn through courses like this, through coaching, therapy, lots of books. So anything that has to do with emotion regulation. Those are three ways that we can take a little more control over the organism part, which allows us to have more mastery over our responses to the stimuli in our environment. So self-regulation, I look at, there's two kind of levels to it. The first I call conditional self-regulation or bottom-up self-regulation. And that's where we use something from the external environment to give us a, a sensory input in some way that helps regulate our system. So again, like I mentioned in the intro, it doesn't always mean calm. It means feeling better in a sense, and better is always relative. So if we're very unmotivated or lethargic, we may want extra energy. And so we need to find something in our environment that energizes us. This could be things like movement or music, sports, cooking, anything like that. We may also feel overstimulated. And in that sense, feeling better would mean a sense of calm or soothing. So other things that we can try for that are going for a walk, taking a bath, anything that gives us that soothing. And again, for every person, it could be totally different. Doing one of these activities might feel energizing or at a certain time of day or a certain rhythm, and doing another activity might feel more calming or soothing, depending again on maybe the rhythm, the time of day, the context, and the person. So those are some conditional or bottom-up ways of self-regulating. Unconditional or top-down ways of self-regulating are when we don't use necessarily any kind of external stimulus or anything that will be a new sensory input for us, but we actually use our own mind. And so one way that we can do that is through meditation. And meditation is just the idea that we are intentionally using our attentional circuits in ways that are somewhat regulating and rhythmic to a certain degree and intentional. So that might mean that we focus, for example, on something rhythmic like our breath or a mantra or a sound of a faucet or air conditioner or something like that, something that has a, a steady, maybe consistency to it. We can have our focus on that. We might also have more of an open kind of sense of awareness, but we're still in a relaxed state. We can also use a gratitude kind of way of thinking and think about all the things that we appreciate in our life, uh, people who appreciate us, things like that. It's really just any kind of thing where we use our mind to regulate, to calm or energize ourselves, to have a state that is more desired for us. So that is unconditional self-regulation. So to recap, we are complex organisms and so different things are gonna have different responses for all of us based on our history, based on our own capacities, our own state in that moment. And we can, through practice and effort and intention, get better at controlling some of those things so that our responses are more how we want them to be. And there's two kinds of self-regulation for that. Top-down, unconditional, where we use our mind, and bottom-up or conditional, where we use something from our external environment. So thanks for joining me for module one, and I'll see you in module two.